A couple weeks ago, I tried my hand at overclocking on a Chinese X79 motherboard. It's time to step that up a generation. Today's video is brought to you by Lexar and the NM610 PCI Express NVMe Drive. Available in 250GB, 500GB, and 1TB capacities, it makes the perfect upgrade for your laptop or desktop PC. Featuring NVMe 1.3 Gen 3x4 and speeds up to 3.5 times faster than SATA, it's the surefire way to supercharge your PC. Get into your games faster with the Lexar NM610 NVMe Drive. Click the link down in the video description to learn more. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. If you've watched my channel before, you know I am no stranger to these Chinese motherboards. However, I've never really overclocked on them. That changed a couple of weeks ago when I took a look at a Chinese X79 motherboard and an unlocked Xeon. Today, we're gonna continue that journey on the Hunan X99 F8 motherboard, as according to my research, this is one of the most overclockable motherboards out there without needing to modify the BIOS. And of course, we're gonna need a chip to overclock with. So let me introduce you to the Xeon E5 1660 V3. This is an eight core 16 thread CPU based on the Intel Haswell architecture with a 3.0 gigahertz base clock and a 3.5 gigahertz max turbo. And even though this is a Xeon CPU, it does have a fully unlocked multiplier, even though Intel never advertised it as having such. For memory, Corsair was kind enough to send out a 32 gigabyte kit of their 3200 megahertz Vengeance LPX series. This is four sticks of eight gigabytes each and should allow us to run in quad channel on this motherboard. Now this motherboard and CPU I did pick up on AliExpress. And while I was there, I went ahead and picked up a PC cooler 256 gigabyte NVMe drive, which you can see right over here. I've never heard of this brand before and I wanted to give them a shot. Uh, we'll see how that goes. NZXT also reached out to me recently and asked if I had any projects coming up that they could help out with. Of course I do. So they were kind enough to send out the C750 power supply, which is a 750 watt 80 plus gold unit and it is fully modular, so it should be a perfect fit for this build. They also sent over the Kraken X73, which is their 360 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler. And that should be more than adequate to keep the 1660 V3 nice and cold, even under overclocked loads. Taking care of the rest of the fans in the system is this Arctic kit, and Arctic did send this kit out. However, if you watch my channel for any length of time, you know these are pretty much my favorite budget fans that are out there. So I probably would have bought a kit of these anyway. For graphics, we're gonna use my EVGA GTX 1080 for the win card. But what case are we gonna put this in? For a case, I dug this guy out of storage. This is the GamerStorm Deepcool MA Cube 550. And if I'm being honest, they sent this to me well over a year ago, right in between me moving twice. And so this kind of got lost in the shuffle. So Deepcool, if you're watching, I'm sorry, but I'm using it now. So let's go ahead and get this thing together and uh, see what the Xeon can really do.
All right, so the build is complete and looking mighty fine if I do say so myself. And now it is time to get into overclocking. Now, I've been working on this for the last couple hours or so, and I've hit a little bit of a stumbling block. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So here we are inside of Windows running Cinebench, and you can see that the CPU does turbo all the way up to 3.3 gigahertz, but that's not nearly good enough for me. So now let's go ahead and try to overclock this thing. As I mentioned in the intro, this board has probably one of the most complete BIOSes I've ever seen out of a Chinese board, and that makes me really excited because that has been one of the major drawbacks of these boards is even if the hardware is there, you can't take advantage of it inside the software. What makes this BIOS particularly exciting is the Intel RC setup window right here. And inside of this is all of the overclocking options you'd normally see for a CPU and RAM, and they are fully unlocked on this board. So we're not gonna mess with the memory at all right now. We'll get into that a little bit later if time allows, but I am gonna go down to the overclocking features and enable processor overclocking. So we'll go down into the processor overclocking menu right here. We'll set our max OC ratio to 3.8 gigahertz, just to get our feet wet. I know the CPU is capable of a lot more than that. And then we'll do an override on our voltage and set it to 1.25 volts. So back inside of Windows and running Cinebench, you can see that all eight cores are at 3.8 gigahertz, and then they immediately drop down to about 3.5. And I was really confused by this at first. If we scroll all the way down, we can see that the CPU package is limiting it to 140 watts, which is the exact TDP rating of this chip. So while the multiplier is unlocked, there is still something holding us to that 140 watt cap. So what's the solution for this? Well, I've gone through the BIOS and I've tried pretty much every setting to unlock the TDP and nothing has worked so far. So I'm hoping number one, it's not a limitation of the board because that would suck. Number two, I'm actually hoping that the all core turbo unlock modification to these X99 boards will allow the TDP to open up a little bit and allow us to get some higher overclock numbers out of the CPU. So let's go ahead and try that. So I have downloaded this collection of tools right here. This is the AMI BIOS modifier, as well as the Intel flashing tool inside of Windows. So we're gonna go ahead and make a backup copy of our BIOS and then modify that BIOS using the AMI BIOS tool. So we're gonna type in FPTW64-D to dump the current BIOS, and we're gonna name this backup.bin. Once we have our BIOS backed up, we're gonna open the mmtool.exe that's inside that folder, and we're gonna load our BIOS image that we just saved. Open up backup.bin. Then we're gonna go over to the CPU patch tab. Inside this tab, we're gonna select the CPU ID 06F2, and we're going to delete this microcode patch. And lastly, we're gonna inject a custom driver into our boot code. And to do that, I'm gonna to go to the Insert tab. I'm gonna click on Volume 02, the DXE Core, and I'm gonna to browse to our custom driver. We're gonna open up the FFS driver folder, open up the single CPU folder, as this is a single CPU board, and then I'm gonna select the 00, which is a zero voltage offset, because I plan on adjusting the voltage manually inside the BIOS. And then click on Insert. And should be able to confirm that by seeing the custom v3 file name right there. And if everything looks good, we're gonna save the image as. I'm gonna go back up to my flash tool folder. I'm gonna save this as turbo.bin. Now you can see my turbo.bin file right there. We're gonna delete the FD from the end of it. And one last modification we need to make by opening up the AMI BIOS patch tool. We're gonna open our turbo.bin BIOS. We're gonna browse down this folder in the common ref code configuration and go down to the Intel RC setup. We're gonna go down to advanced power management and then CPU C state control. Inside of here, we're gonna make sure that both CPU C3 report and CPU C6 report are both disabled. As you can see, C3 is already disabled and we're gonna make sure the same thing is set on C6. So to do that, we're gonna double click on the enable and go to disable in the pull down menu. And if everything checks out, go ahead and save your changes. And now it's finally time to flash our modded BIOS back onto the motherboard. And to do that, we're gonna go back to our command prompt, type in FPTW64, this time a dash F to flash the BIOS, and we're gonna flash over the turbo.bin.
All right, FPT operation has passed, which means in theory, we should be able to reboot this PC now and uh, hopefully bypass that wattage limit. Maybe? So let's close out of everything here and go down to restart. We're getting a postcode of 96 here. Uh, the board is refusing to boot. So I think I'm gonna do a CMOS reset. See if that works. Hopefully I didn't just brick this. But hey, that would make the end of a video, wouldn't it? Yep, same 96. So we're gonna hopefully clear the BIOS and not brick this computer. I bricked it. Yep, just turned itself off again. All right. I might return. We'll see. Not, those are good sounds. <laughs> yes! Whew! All right. We're alive. We're alive. Oh. All right, let's see if we can fix this. All right, so it seems a CPU swap fixed it. And I'm assuming it has something to do with the manual overclock that I had set. So luckily I had a spare CPU around. I missed the BIOS, of course. Well, hey, this uh, CPU is stepping revision two. Uh, so let's try the uh, 2680 V3 that I have in the all-core turbo while we're here. Yeah, seems to be working on here. 3.2 gigahertz. Well, this was an unexpected turn to this video. 3.2, all-core. Uh, we slowed down to 3.0 now, it looks like. 1788, how does that compare? It's a great question. Yeah, we pretty much got the same thing we did before. So I don't know that it made a massive difference on this chip. So we did hit a max wattage of 125. So it seems we may still be watt limited on this board, unfortunately. So the all-core turbo didn't fix that. I wonder what will. All right. I give up. Um, I've been through pretty much every single menu in this BIOS and I cannot find a way to unlock the TDP on this particular motherboard. But I know there's one surefire way to get the right answer that I'm looking for, and that's to post the wrong answer. And so this is where I'm gonna leave you. Now, you've seen me try to modify this BIOS and unlock the turbo mode on this particular board, but I've also tried some steps off camera as well, including downloading a pre-modified BIOS off of a Russian website and inject that into the board. And that got me exactly the same result. So I'm not really sure where to go from here. So at this point, I'm fairly certain there is something to do with the P state inside of this motherboard that is limiting the TDP of the chips and it won't let me exceed their rated TDP because my 2680 V3 limited me to 120 watts and my 1660 V3 limited me to 140 watts. And while I've read overall very positive reviews of this board, both with the all-core turbo unlock and with overclocking on unlocked chips, I just can't seem to get around that TDP limitation. So I'm leaving it to you guys. If you guys have a potential answer, please leave it down in the comments below. And if you solve this, I would be eternally grateful. I really do want this to work and I wanna see what a 1660 V3 can do. 
My only previous experience in overclocking X99 has been with number one, retail boards, and number two, with the i7-5820K. And while I was able to get 4.5 gigahertz on that chip, uh, I still wanna see what the eight core in this can do. But unfortunately, that's gonna wrap it up for today. If you like this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. Follow me on Twitter at Craft Computing. And if you like the content you see on this channel and wanna help support me in what I do, consider joining the Patreon. Link is down in the video description. As a bonus, you'll get exclusive access to my Discord server, where you can chat with myself and the other hosts from Talking Heads, my once weekly live show for the latest in beer and tech news. Thank you all so much for watching this one. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. Beer for today is from Lewitt Brewing Company. It is the Holy Diver. It is a Belgian winter strong ale. So a little bit of a Christmas in September thing going on here. Ho Ho Holy Diver, a Belgian strong ale brewed with Belgian candy sugars, cardamom, and vanilla. Rich with aromatic esters reminiscent of chai spices, this beer diver is brewed to rock your holiday spirit and roll your thirst. It is very strong in the cardamom, I will tell you that. Oh, that is good. Oh, wow. Oh, that is delicious. I don't know if I'm gonna get through this video. Yeah, that's it. Video for today is canceled, you guys. I'm just gonna sit here and drink this. Wow, that has layers to it. <laughs> I'm trying to find the right words to explain the party that is happening in my mouth right now. If you like Belgian Strongs, this is quintessential a Belgian Strong Ale for the first 50% of it. And it is probably one of, if not the best examples of a Americanized Belgian Strong Ale that I've had. Up front, it is a classic Belgian strong. It is everything that you look for in a Belgian beer. It's got that that banana kind of flavor to it. It's got the those esters and a lot of really rich malt flavor. And then as soon as the beer is is out of your mouth, so on the back side of the flavor, you get this kickback of of cinnamon and clove and cardamom and vanilla. Oh, this is really good.